In this design tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to do a City Selfie logo. So hi guys and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. My name is Manny and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to do a simple city selfie logo as you guys can see right in front of us. So we're going to pull the web or basically the world card here from the web. We're going to take it into Photoshop as we have already here on a separate canvas. And then we're going to just add this complete new thing here as a separate logo again. Alright, so let's get started with that right away. First of all, what I want to do is go to new up here and as well just say here new. So I'm going to open a brand new canvas. Right away, I'm going to set it to the same screen size here as my video formatter. So it's going to be 1920 pixels by 1180 pixels and as well resolution 300. Okay, then as well I'm going to hit OK over here. Directly we have a new canvas over here and for the next step I'm going to press F, get out of the full screen mode and just quickly go over here to our world map. I'm going to drag that straight over here, basically meaning just taking the lay here and dropping that into this canvas. Okay, so let's select the world card over here. I'm going to escape that, select again this canvas and press F for the full screen mode. Okay, so for the first step what I want to do now is basically just crop this world card. We can also double click on here and just rename that to world. So I'm going to press command T. Also Windows guys, please use control when I say command. Alright, so I'm literally going to just drag this map out and make it super big. And I'm not too worried about getting this a little bit distorted now because I'm anyways going to add a little bit blur on that at the end. So I'm dragging it all the way just with literally taking an anchor point here or basically uh, the points, the boxes here, holding shift and then I drag it out all the way so it equally expands to both sides. Once I'm done, like now, I'm just going to hit accept here. I'm also going to zoom out a little bit so you guys can see it a little better. Okay. So I've already placed everything. I can now still take just the move tool and with the cursors just move it a little bit to the left and right, like so. Okay, so for the first step again, I'm also going to erase this banner or logo over here. So literally I'm just going to take the clone stamp tool for that with S, also a clone stamp here on the left hand side. Then as well still on this layer and also switch here my blending options on current layer for just the clone stamp tool. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Hold Alt, sample again in the area close by, and literally just brush here over that logo really quickly. Okay, so that's obviously because I pulled it from the web and stuff. So normally you would also maybe get it somewhere. I also sometimes mostly just Google um, wallpapers, so then you get some pretty cool high quality images. All right, so directly we already have the wall card. Now we just need to adjust the color a little bit. For that, what I'm going to do is basically go all the way down here and just select a new solid color. So there we have solid color. Directly, I'm also choosing a color over here from the color picker, which I actually already did here, somewhere like a light blue. I don't want to go too dark and not too light because I'm, our center logo is going to be white. So something in between should be good enough. I'm going to hit OK. And first of all, what I want to do now with this blue color is basically set it so that we have a super or everything is blue. And we're going to do that with the blending options here. So literally take that all the way just down to color. And first of all, we have everything now blue and everything, yeah, it looks blue. Now for the next step, I just want to duplicate this color fill layer. So basically command J. And this time I'm just going to set this now again from color back to normal. And then also the opacity all the way down, just like to 50%, maybe a little bit bigger, 60%. So it's just like shining through a little bit and not that prominent anymore, as you guys can see, as we had previously. Okay, great. So that's already all for the background. Now, last step that I'm still going to do is press Command, Alt, Shift, and E all together. So we have one solid layer. And this solid layer, I'm going to blur that a little bit. So let's go up here to filter. We're going to go to blur, Gaussian blur, and give that like a, yeah, almost like one pixel blur actually. Okay, great. So it's just a little bit blurred and not that sharp anymore. Yeah, and just leads away a little bit again from our logo. So the logo can be somewhere in the center now. And yeah, your eye focuses more onto the logo. Okay, great. So for the next step now, I want to first set some guidelines. So again, I'm going to go back to my actions. I showed this also previously in a tutorial. Again, I talked about actions here. 
So I'm basically just going to select my actions for my guides, going to play that and directly we already have a nice center point for our logo again. Okay, great. Now for the top part here, I'm just literally going to drag down another guide here and place that somewhere around here because I want to kind of create like a little bit of an eye dropper or like a dropper shade here, like a water drop, which is in a different way around. And yeah, using guidelines helps me quite a lot. Okay, I'm going to press here again, command and switch to this canvas. And first of all, I'm going to go back to the marking tool. So again, select the marking tool, the elliptical marking tool over here. So we have a round shape now as like so. Okay. Then also I'm going to create a complete new group here. Maybe let's, before we even start that, I'm just going to double tap here onto that background layer. We can actually just also say, okay, delete that. We can take now these other layers here from our background with shift, select all, press command G create a new group and I'm just going to group that quickly as background okay and now again I'm going to create a new layer now this is going to be the logo start I'm just going to write here logo and we're going to start right away here with creating our selection now before I start the selection I'm going to hold shift so it's equally expanding and as well creating a nice round ball and literally I'm just going to make roughly a bigger ball over here like so something like that maybe yeah that should be big enough Okay, so that's basically where my whole selection from my logo will be. I can still move that around, but I'm actually happy now for the start. I'm going to place it in a moment. Next step, I'm going to say right click and say here, fill this again with a white foreground color. So basically under the contents area, I'm just going to choose white and blending option normal opacity 100. That's all good. I'm going to hit OK and directly we already have a nice white space in here. Now I'm going to press command D to get out of the selection and I can start working and first of all place my logo here in the right center point. So I'm going to press command T, not because I want to transform it, just to see these little boxes here. And they help me now to place this a little bit into the center point. So as you guys can see with the cursors as well, left and right, moving that up and down. And now I can directly put that into the right position. Now I'm going to hit escape. Nope. Let's do that. Command Z a step back here actually. So I'm going to press Command T again and do the same process again. Move that all the way down. Okay, like so. And it's in the center. And now not escape, just hit accept here at the top. And now it's in the center. Okay, great. And now I still want to create like a little bit of a drop down here. So what I need to do is maybe just take the move tool again, take my guide here and maybe move that just a little bit more down because I want to make this a little bit wider down. Okay, so on the next layer now, so again, create a new layer. We can also rename that again to logo two this time. Okay, and I'm gonna select the pen tool with P. You can also go here in the left hand side and just select the pen tool over there. I'm basically gonna make a drop over here. So basically my first anchor point and my second, but before I do that, let's just double press escape here. I'm gonna zoom in very closely, P for the pen tool and just literally find exactly the spot here in the center. Okay, that's good. Z. So I'm going to zoom out again. So I normally use Z to zoom out. You can also work here with the navigator on the side. Okay, so basically pen tool again. And the next drop we're going to do is right away here on this side. So again, put an anchor point there. But once you do the anchor point, keep on holding the anchor point because now we want to just transform this path a little bit. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do, I'm just literally looking at the bottom part here of like right down here, I'm looking at the path there, then turning it a little bit and trying to create like a really nice round shape there. Something like this. Okay, great. So as you guys can see, really nice round shape. I'm going to zoom a little bit closer so you guys can see it better. It's going really close in here, fixing up with that ball and going down. Okay, let's go up a little bit. I'm going to take hold alt first of all, still in the pen tool, hold alt. Now as well, I'm going to take this point all the way down because I'm going to go into this direction now. And this will also determine in which direction your new path will go. So that's why I chose to take it all the way down again. I'm literally going to go into the center down here and all the way down. Okay, so completing the path again, as you guys can see. And now I'm going to hit right click and say stroke, not stroke path, fill path. Fill path and I'm going to fill this as well with white foreground color again. So under the contents area, use white here and you can leave the blending option to normal opacity 100 yes and the rest also set to anti aliases that's okay gonna hit okay and directly we have a nice path 
So now what I'm going to do is press Command Alt H. So just getting out of, so we actually getting rid of these lines here. As well, I'm going to press Command J, duplicate that, and now I'm going to transform that horizontally. So I'm going to go up to the top, edit, transform, and flip horizontally. The reason why I do that is to, in order, first of all, have one side perfect and then another side perfect as well. So they're obviously very similar. I'm going to press V for Move Tool, move that over a little bit. Yeah, and just place it already snapped again into the right position. And that's bet it, actually. So I can zoom out again, and first of all, we created a really nice drop. Now I can go back to view here and just say again, clear guides, and they're out of my life. Great. So now I've already got a really nice space to work for the logo part here. Now before I continue, I'm going to take a logo image here and press Command J and take that all the way up to the top and just here, right here, logo 3. Let me be with just a 3. Also what I'm going to do is press Command T in order to make this ball a little bit smaller. But before I do that, I want to actually first of all choose a little bit of a stroke color. Meaning that I'll double click on here and go all the way under stroke here. So I'm going to select stroke over here and as you guys can see we really have a really nice outline. But I don't, I don't want it to be black actually. So I'm going to just select the option here and go under color. I'm going to double tap on that and also going to choose the same color as we have here on our background. So select that with the eyedropper or the color dropper, okay. Select that and I'm also going to make the size a bit bigger. Say something around 6, maybe 8 even. Yeah, let's try 6, okay. Gonna hit OK over here and press Command T once again. So I'm gonna hold Shift, also select one anchor point here on the side and just make this a little bit smaller. So we're directly already creating a really nice shape in here. Again, I can move that into the center. A little bit smaller though, like so. Okay, going to accept that and also move that somewhere here in the center again with also my cursors. You can also use the guides again if you want to. Just hit here again the actions, super quick. Command T and you're again in the center. Perfect. Okay, so next step that I'm still going to do, just again clear the guides. I'm also going to turn off everything because I want to create a new stamp now from this layer. Obviously this stamp has, or this layer has a few effects here on the layer effects and I actually don't want to, or I want to get rid of that. So I'm just going to create a new layer, press Command Alt Shift E. Now we already have another master shortcut here which is basically now the complete same layer as we had before but without the effects. So if I'm going to turn this off it's exactly the same but now we can actually cut this and work a little bit easier on that without having problems with the effects here. Let me show that to you guys quickly. If I'm going to switch on the background layer and if I'm going to go to layer 1 and just take the marking tool and cut out the little piece here, just press backspace you guys will see this in a second here. You will see that it cut it out perfectly and we don't have the stroke border around here and that's what I actually want. I'm just going to switch back to the history panel here so I can show you guys again. I'm going to turn this layer off and do it on our previous logo 3 layer and when I hit delete now we will actually have a little bit of the stroking border here which I don't want now. Okay so that's why I created a complete new empty layer without the effects. Now as well, I can just hit right click or delete here and delete also that layer. Okay, turn everything on again. Zoom out. And now we still have our separate layer here. We can just maybe rename that again to Logo 3. Okay, great. So let's start now with some type fonts here. So first of all, what I'm going to do is again select here the fonts. So T for the text type tool. And as well, right from the start, I'm going to work again with my lovely uh, font here which is called Health Fittica Neue. It's also in the description down below if you guys want to find all those fonts. Okay, and I'm going to make just like a big selection over here. And as well I'm going to write now Selfie. So Selfie is going to be the first word that I want to type. As well I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to write it in caps capital letters. Like so. Okay, great. I'm going to select all and literally going to accept that. And now what I still want to do is as well go here over here on the right hand side just to the characters and just select it again, select all as well and just have a look here under 220 maybe let's start with like a hundred okay and also our size is just almost like a seven pixels height okay select that that's great I'm gonna accept that 
And that's going to be our start now. So I'm going to put it somewhere over here. And now for the next step that I want to do is also take another font in here. So again, the T for the text tool. Again, I'm going to make a bigger selection here over here and write city. So it's going to be like a city selfie. Okay, select all of that. And then for that, I want to choose basically a complete new font. So for that, I'm going to go over to the font area here again. Yeah, and let's take like a really cool cartoony font here, which is basically K. G716. Okay, let's select that. And that looks really great. Okay, I'm going to make this super big, like a font size of 23. And as well, I'm going to make move these uh, letters just a little bit closer to each other. So again, on the character side, I'm going to make that a little bit smaller over here, like so. And going to make that a little bit more bigger. Okay, accept that from the top. And directly, we have that. I'm going to move it somewhere in the center again with just my cursors okay and as well I'm going to take the selfie move that in a little bit and I can directly see it's a little bit too small I want to make it a little bit bigger let's just drag that a little bit down press T again select all of it and we can, first of all I don't want to make the font bigger I just want to space them a little bit more so I'm just going to go over here and space that maybe as well to 200 yeah 220 actually <laughs> that we had before so 220 again and then just with a move tool again, I'm going to move it back into the right position. Something like that. Great. All right. So that's basically directly in already. Now as well, what I still want to do for the last step, let's just quickly get some guides again. So back to actions, back selecting the guides, select the run. Okay, great. What I still want to do is cut out a little piece over here. So I can just like put in a little arrow as we had earlier, like over here. Okay, go back again. So what I want to do is just select logo 3. That's why I've also chosen to, like I showed you guys earlier, do this without the effects on the layer. Okay, zoom in a little bit closer. And this I'm going to do completely freehand. You guys can do it however you like. I'm going to make like a selection here with the pen tool. Another selection, or basically an anchor point, another anchor point. Yeah, and go a little bit further and somewhere over here. Cool. Okay, just completing the path again. Selecting the last anchor point. Now we have a nice path. Right click and just say here, make a selection, zero feathering please, okay, and I'm going to hit delete and it's out of our way, great. Command D and now we can still just create like a little small arrow over here, which I'm basically going to do, I'm going to do it directly maybe on a new layer, just completely a new layer again, I'm going to write your arrow, great. And now for the last step, literally just with the pen tool again, put an anchor point over here, another anchor point over here. And one in the center, maybe over here, and combining that again. You can also be a little bit more precise if you create some guidelines from the top. All right, so we've created the path here. I'm going to press right click and just say fill this path. So again, right click fill path. This time I want to use not white foreground color, I want to choose color. So going to select color, the color picker will come up. I'm going to select the same as the font over here. OK, hit OK again, and directly we have filled that. Again, I can press Command Shift H, so hiding again the outlines here. I can still press V for the Move tool and move that a little bit in and out. Great, and that's all, basically all. I'm going to zoom out again, and you guys can see the complete new effect here from our brand new logo that we just created like in a few minutes. I'm going to say Clear Guides. Yeah, and that's basically it. So yeah guys, thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave the comments down below if you have any questions. I'm happy to interact with you guys. Don't forget to subscribe and check out all our new upcoming uh, design tutorials. Thanks guys and see you next time. Bye bye.